What makes emotions so powerful and why do we let them run us sometimes? We don't have any choice. You know, we used to think, and actually probably still a lot of people think, that what really drives us is hunger, thirst, and sex drives. But think for a moment. People will starve to death if they have, if the only food supply they feel is disgusting. And people do starve to death. People will take their own life because of despair and emotion. So the will to survive is, is puny compared to the power of emotions. And people may never have sex because of fear. So that's also, it is the emotions that have been built into us over the course of our evolution because they were of benefit. That's why they, if they weren't of any use, we wouldn't have them. They are of benefit to deal with what's most important in life and to deal with it in a way that has been successful in the past without taking time out to think. That's why they're there. You would never want to not have them. Who would not want to have the 12 different ways you can enjoy yourself? That's what most of us want. And we think we don't want to ever be afraid. But if we're in a threatening situation and you didn't have fear, you'd be unsafe. If you were confronted by food that might actually uh, make you nauseous or uh, poison you and you didn't have disgust, you'd be at risk. You need these emotions, but you need to have some choice about how you engage with these emotions. What do you think uh, stops people from acting on their emotions sometimes, whether it's negative or positive, like if people put themselves in dangerous situations and they feel the fear, but they don't um, act on it and they don't leave the situation, or somebody feels like somebody else's pain but doesn't act on it and just you know, chooses to walk away and not help. I wish I knew the answer to that question. There certainly is the case that you take people who do extreme sports, who enjoy, in some sense, overcoming the fear and succeeding. It's not me. You won't find me doing jump, bungee jumping off of high bridges. Uh, but there are people who love to do that, and they become actually, in some sense, addicted to the adrenaline rush that occurs. Um, I think. Risk-taking, there are some people who like to avoid risks uh, and some people who thrive on risks. That's it. While we all have the same emotions, over the course of our development, we develop very different attitudes about these emotions. We become specialists in some emotions and totally avoidant, if we can, of other emotions. Uh, you'll never catch me going to a thriller I don't like being scared in movies. You'll never catch me going to a movie where there's a lot of violence. I don't like to experience anger vicariously. Some people do. Those movies are very successful, very successful. The kind of movies I like, like uh, this recent Woody Allen film, Midnight in Paris. Well, that, some people like it's very, It's whimsy. I like whimsy. It's fun. It's interesting. It's humorous. So. Uh, those are my types. The others are not. But one isn't better than another. They're just different. There isn't anything about emotion that you can think of where you won't find individual differences, even though we all have the same emotions. We experience them differently. We have different attitudes about them. We have different degrees of awareness about them. Even within a culture, even within a family, if you have siblings, you will know they don't all feel the emotions exactly the same way. They may feel the emotions more intensely or less intensely. They may have a faster speed to become emotional than you do. We, these emotions, if you think of metaphorically, are like programs, but they run on different hardware. Our brains are different hardware, one from another. And of course, that soon gets changed because experience changes your brain. It isn't fixed at birth, just the opposite. In our society, the focus tends to be on encouraging us to respect each other's differences. Is this the best way to encourage young people to develop compassion? And as a scientist, do you think it would help to develop compassion if we focus thoroughly on our similarities as human beings? I think we need to focus on both, because both are there. We are all the same and we're all different. Uh, we need to understand the ways in which we are the same. 
and we need to understand the ways we are different and we need to respect differences but there are some differences that we need to try to help people change for example explosive anger that leads people to say harmful or insulting things to others uh, most people who have that really regret it and they don't know how to change it nobody likes people like that and it's intimidating it, so there are differences that we don't want to respect we want to help people be able to change and there are very few people in the world who have emotional behaviors that are harmful who who want them they just don't know how, what to do about them as a scientist what do you think every young person should know about emotions as much as possible <laughs> they should know why we have them uh, they should know the, the exercises they can do to improve their emotional life. They should recognize emotions in others. They should learn how to deal with the emotions of other people. There are four skills. The first skill and the hardest one to learn is how to become aware of the impulse to act emotionally. So, so you can choose whether or not you want to engage and if so, how. The second skill a little easier, but still hard, but there are exercises for it, is how to become aware of the fact that you've started to act emotionally so you can exercise choice as to how you engage. The third is to recognize the emotions of others, even uh, to recognize the signs that emotion is just beginning. And that's a very easy skill to learn. We have some tools on the internet to teach that to people, and tens of thousands of people have learned it. And the fourth skill is much harder. I'm working on an internet tool for it. Once I recognize how you're feeling, how should I respond? What do I need to consider to respond to your emotions in the most constructive way? So those are things that I would like everyone, child and adult, adolescent and old person, everybody needs to know that. Nobody teaches it for all practical purposes.